Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy new year. Thank you for joining and supporting the Lord's Prayer. This is our fifth year in operation. Okay. It happens every Saturday at 6 a.m. And year after year, this line has been transformed. And I pray that it has been a blessing to someone. It has impacted someone's life. It has brought some level of encouragement. But we are finally in our fifth year and we made it to 2022 where we didn't see any prospect, any outlook of us ever getting to 2021 when the pandemic started. But we are going into 2022 strong. This time we've been sitting at home. We've all been working from home. We've all been, you know, <clears throat> overusing social media. We have been in a place that we've never been before. Churches have been closed, some permanently. Our education system has now been virtual. It's become virtual. You know, a lot of people are suffering socially. There's even still a lot of the police brutality that was going on that we saw a lot of in 2020, but it's still happening, right? There are a lot of things that are just still transpiring. Divorces are becoming a thing. You know, um, we see that our society is over-sexualized and money has become our primary focus. So I can go on and on and on and on and on, right? But we can look at these events and challenges and allow it to have a negative impact on us, or we can remind ourselves of what the gospel of Mark says in chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 23 says, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Let me explain what it means to decree and declare a thing. A decree is an official order <clears throat> issued by a legal authority. For a decree to be executed, the person issuing it must have authority. In Luke, it says that we have the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. A declaration is to make something known formally, officially or explicitly, but to decree and declare is pointless without faith, which our Mark scripture tells us. We cannot doubt in our hearts and expect God to move. With our level of faith and the authority that he has already given us, we can speak to circumstances and challenges and it shall be done for you. Listen in as we decree, declare, and pray for these mountains as we declare it in the new year. God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is another day that the Lord has made and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Happy New Year. This is the beginning of a new year. We thank God for bringing us through such a, such a wonderful year, a time where we've had time to be home in his presence, a time that we can, you know, study the things of God, be in prayer. We are ever so grateful for such a time as this. And this is the opportunity that we have now to declare it in the new year. We are decreeing and declaring some things to the seven mountains of influence. We are going to speak on the mountain of religion today. I have with me Minister Jasmine Rosario from Florida, and I will give her a brief moment to introduce herself. I just wanted to let everyone know how we met. Um, we actually met on Clubhouse and went into a room that she was hosting with some other moderators. And towards the end of the room, the Lord led me to pray for each moderator, just kind of interceding, covering, and, you know, a prayer of protection over them. 
And ever since then, any room she kind of holds, if I get the ping or the notification, I come in and I kind of just pray and cover and keep her in prayer. She doesn't know that, but this is the first day she's learning about this. Um, but, you know, the Lord put it on my heart to speak to the mountain of religion because there is a gift and an anointing in her for evangelism, right? There is a purity about her that speaks to um, not wanting legalistic mindsets, right? Not wanting us to walk under this traditional idea of what religion looks like. And when the Lord laid her on my heart, I reached out to her and she was gladly willing. <laughs> and I was so excited when she said yes um, to doing this assignment. So we are gonna start now and talk about the mountain of religion. This mountain of religion, if we think about it, there are many, many religions in the world, right? Some of the major ones, Islam, Hindu, Buddhism, Catholicism, Judaism, um, there's Christianity. And what seems to, or what shocked me when I was doing research about it, Christianity still seems to be the number one religion globally. But yet there's something that's still missing. There's something that's still holding us back. There's something that's still blocking us. And that's why we're gonna to speak to this mountain of religion. So I'm gonna turn it over to Minister Jasmine and let's just hear what the Lord downloaded in her about the mountain of religion. Minister Jazz. Amen. God bless you, Elder Joy. God bless everyone. Morning praises. How are you doing? <laughs> um, it's such an honor to be here and to um, discuss about the mountain of religion and to share with you all on this morning um, what the Lord has downloaded to tell the church and the people to God be the glory. Yes. And um, I just want to say that the first um, thought, the first voice that I heard from the Lord is said, I am shaking the core of religion. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, Amen. I'm shaking the core. So if it be okay, I'll open up in prayer. Yes. And then we'll flow right in. Amen. Um, Heavenly Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise on this morning, God. God, I thank you that your Holy Spirit is in this place, God. Let the sweet aroma of heaven begin to fill our atmosphere wherever everyone is located, God. I thank you, you're covering us under the blood of Jesus, oh God. God, expand our capacity to receive what it is that you want us to receive on this morning. Enlighten the eyes of our understanding, Heavenly Father. Father, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing before your sight, my God and my Redeemer, my strength. And I decree and I declare this morning and this year will be a major year of breakthrough for the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I want to open up with the scripture. Um, starting from James chapter one, verse 27, he says, for if you claim to be religious, but can't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself and your religion is worthless, pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Amen. So we're entering a season and a time that there's going to be great signs, miracles, and wonders happening in this hour. So this is why God is shaking the core of religion. He needs to shake the church. It is his plan for us to do great works just as Jesus did when he walked with his disciples. Um, if you remember um, in the book of Acts, the first church of Christ, they demonstrated great signs, miracles, and wonders. And that was just the beginning. Now we're here in 2022. <laughs> and there is a lot more to be done. But we're entering a season. There's going to be a great demonstration 
Amen. Because that is going to um, provoke people. People are going to say, hey, I want to know that Jesus. What's this Jesus you're talking about? Wait, he heals, he delivers, he sets free. Is the power of God is greater than any other power. Amen. And um, is greater than the power of witchcraft. Is greater than the power of voodoo, hoodoo, santeria. All the witchcraft, burning sage, there's no power that compares to the power of God. So as a church, as a body of Christ, it's time for us to break out of our um, box in mindsets break out into the freedom of Christ and rise up so that God can use his church to be the instrument, the people that would demonstrate these great works in this hour. Amen. Because it's time to, it, the kingdom of darkness need to be overthrown. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so what's happening? What has been the issue with the church? The body of Christ has allowed corruption to creep in. Amen. Not just one church. This is all as a unit. Um, the church has been more divided according to the denomination and political parties. And it's just been so divided than um, we have ever seen. Um, there's so much arguing. There's so much um, no one agrees. There's so much slander. It's just so much mess happening right now, guys. And um, you, as we enter, as we are doing, entering in 2022, it is unification is critical for the body of Christ. There has been a cry for unity and it's very critical because there's going to be a massive revival that is going to spark the whole world. It is going to be just this big sparking revival fire. Amen. Now, let me ask you, do you so, think that being at home in this pandemic for the last almost two years, if that has driven a further wedge between um, church members, um, members and their pastors, um, between the church body across the globe, do you think it's, it's, it's brought about more disunity because we haven't been able to get together and fellowship? Yes. I believe it has brought about more disunity because of the lack of the fellowship, right? Um, Hebrews talk about, it says, do not forsake the fellowship of the brethren. Do not, you know, it's so important. Like as, as human beings, God created us to be relational. Right. We weren't created to be isolated. We weren't, be, we weren't created to be an island, right? And so I believe that wedge has also caused um, division because now, um, you know, there has been, you know, no one wants, uh, the majority of people don't want, doesn't want no more accountability. You know, if they can have, you know, they, you can have service on your computer or your phone, you don't have a pastor holding accountable. There's a difference between um, saying I have a pastor and being pastored. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's a big difference of allowing that so there has been there has definitely been a, been a wedge okay. yeah so um when did it start how did everything start is it covid started <laughs> 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 <No>. <laughs> so everyone's was thinking all this covid stuff you know you know right. that is at that right now right, right. His, his plans for us is to not to harm us but to prosper us and give us a hope in the future amen yep. and so when did it start the power of the tongue hallelujah there's no control there has been no discipline and control with the tongue within the body of christ there's too much there's been too much slander there's too much negative confessions taking place. Talk about it. And all of that has been, you we reap what we sow. Right. So if you've been sowing death, you're going to reap death. You sow life, you will reap life. Mm -hmm. So all those negative confessions, all those bad things everybody is saying about themselves, about their mama, about the daddy, about right. their pastor, mm -hmm. about their bishop, about everybody and everything about their own leadership and their own people in the church everyone's everyone's bickering everyone's fighting right 
that has been sown into the earth. It's been sown in the spirit in the earth realm. And now there's a lot of this bitterness happening. And when someone becomes bitter, then they start operating in witchcraft. And mm. unfortunately, the body of Christ, a lot of people have been operating in witchcraft. Right. And they have been ministering and when they have been praying, all because there's been a lack of discipline with the tongue. Now, I don't want to get into what the Lord downloaded to you. I don't know if this is in there and if it's coming, but, you know, I felt for the longest with the pandemic that this was an opportunity for the church to sit down. Right. This was an opportunity for God to say, okay, enough with the slander, enough with all of the antics, sit down and get a reset. And I'm wondering if we actually learned from this time at home. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, as you're speaking about slander, I, I just wonder if we've learned anything. So many great women and men of God have gone on to glory. And it, it's like, are we really learning anything? Many buildings are closing, like pastors aren't afford, aren't able to afford to keep the brick and mortar itself open. And that's why a lot of them have transitioned to just, you know, virtual services. But have we really learned anything? Hmm. And I, I don't know if this, you know, this is something that you have later, but we can we can discuss it if you do. But um, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Um. I think that um, there has been a lack of understanding of who God is mm -hmm. and the understanding and knowledge of who God is. There's been a lack of wisdom. Um, and we, there hasn't been people learning their lesson because they lack understanding. Right. They don't understand who God is or even if they, he took this, this time to reset the church and it was an opportunity to get to know God right. for yourself and instead of what somebody else is saying, right? Mm -hmm. So I believe that um, it's because of a lack of understanding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, this this is, and it's going to get more heavier. Put your seatbelt on. The ride's going to go. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Um, there's been financial abuse. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be going there. And I was like, Oh, we going there? Said, yeah, we going there. I was like, Oh, we going there. Okay. So <laughs> we're going all the way there. Well, we going in because this <laughs> is shaking. Amen. Right. Gonna shake it. We're gonna ruffle everything up. All right. So there's been financial abuse. So people in the body of Christ are abusing finances. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a two. There's a two way street in this, right? There's been false doctrines and false teachings that have gone out to um, that have convinced people they don't need to tithe. They don't need to give 10 percent. They don't need to sow. Right. right. And um, these people, they you know, they 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 try to make a good argument. But at the end of the day, the word of God is the word of God. And um, there's blessings when you tithe and there's blessings when you sow to the right person mm -hmm. church. so this is how it transitions right and so these people have manipulated these this false doctrine has put a fear of the prosperity gospel oh we going there yes we are so now there's this fear of receiving a blessing there's a fear of wait, we can, we can be rich, but I thought we're supposed to be broke and humble. Right. Ooh, that's not humility. That's a lie from the hell. Cause he said the works of our hands, well, prosper and right. our soul prosper, our health prosper. And he wants to take care of us. Jesus had a treasurer, Judas. We know about Judas, but come mm -hmm. on. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus, he's like, oh, Jesus is homeless. Jesus was traveling, y'all. <laughs> he was. He was, he was doing what he had to do okay so so but also because of this there also has been people who've been manipulating people for selfish gain as well right. mm -hmm. and so um 
so this also was a tactic the enemy used for people to, um, yeah, well, then we don't have to tell, uh, excuse me, we don't have to sew, we don't have to do ties because people just manipulating it. You can't do it out of compulsion. You can't do it out of this, right? Because there's so much witchcraft manipulation mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. finances, okay? Right. There's a time to sow. There's a time the Lord is going to give you an amount to sow. He's going to tell you, you're going to sow this, you're going to do that. And even if you go to, you're hearing a word or something and, and uh, you know, sow into the word, there, there, there is a sowing and reaping principle when you sow financially, all of that is correct. But there has been people who take advantage of people yeah. and they just, and they're not in ministry for, um, because they love the Lord, they're in ministry because mm -hmm. they're using it as a business. Yes, a cash cow. Yes, and that is so sad. Mm -hmm. And that has um, um, put such a bad perspective, it's put such a bad name to Christianity. Yeah. And it's time to change that. I think that's, I think that's exactly why a lot of people don't, I know when I was younger, confess your sins one to another i know when i was younger <laughs> i one of the reasons why when my parents were like oh we're going to church and you got to give and you got to do this and you got to do that and i didn't want any part of it was because i used to see you know like the creflo dollars the um frederick price these big name people getting on jets that they bought private jets owning these mansions of homes and I was like, they're using the people's money for their own benefit. But, you know, grow, now leaving my youth and coming into an understanding of the word for myself, like my whole perspective shifts because I understand that there is a sowing and reaping principle. And not only that, that um, pastors get paid very little. Yeah, that's true some of these big name people probably get these big donations or have like city council or whatever behind them. And these are the things like you don't see behind the scenes, but when, when people that don't have a full understanding of the sowing and reaping principle manipulate people to, for their own personal interest, then that's how we send people away. That's how we push people away right. from coming to Christ. And I think it's it's a disservice that we're doing. Yes, it, it is a disservice. And, um, but this year, all that is changing. Yes. The wheat and the tear is being separated. Yes, hallelujah. It, it re, he, the Lord's been saying, he's been telling, he's been warning people. He's been warning, he's been out. This year, it's being thrown down. So mm -hmm. we, we just pray for mercy. Yes. And they repent, amen. And um, and return to the first love, mm -hmm. amen. So and that's the finances. And what's the other issue? Leadership. Sorry, y'all. We going in. Let's talk I'm about not, Let's talk about leadership. Leaders are lacking leadership. Leaders are that's rough. That. Yes, <laughs> leaders are lacking leadership leadership people are too caught up in having a position in leadership or a title mm -hmm. and this is in the way of properly leading the sheep the flock the mm -hmm. members this is in the way of properly discipling the saints And I'm not done there. Leaders are here to serve. When you look up the scripture about the apostle, the, um, there's some in Ephesians, some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, right? There is a Greek word that means to serve. And it has... And it's like, oh, but it's the office. It's like, no, it's to serve and edify the body of Christ. Right. It's to serve the people. 
And the Lord says, once the leader serves, then the people in the church will be begin to serve too. Yeah. It always starts from, from, you know, the head down. Right. Right. When the Bible talks about the body of Christ and then this is Jesus is the head. Right. And then it flows down. It's just the same thing. The pastor is considered the shepherd. So if they're not able to be a servant leader, your, your sheep aren't going to be that. No. Yeah. And um, we can't keep getting frustrated with the condition of the sheep in the church or in certain churches when it starts from head down. Mm -hmm. And um, we, the pastors watch over our souls, right? Right. And, um, and that is what a pastor is supposed to do. And it, all of it comes together. This is, this is not a cash cow. Opening a church is not a cash cow. Being a prophet and apostle, and it's none of this is to to for selfish gain or ambition mm -hmm. it's to edify and build up the body of Christ. Is to is to lead people and point them back to Jesus. Amen. So once lead, once the leader serves, and the people and the church will serve because we are called to serve and edify and build up the body of Christ, making Amen. disciples out of all nations, going everywhere, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 The Great Commission, y'all. And so moving forward, and what else is an issue? Quenching the Holy Spirit. I'm glad you're talking about it because I wrote, I just literally wrote it down <laughs> to talk <Wow>. about it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> girl. Amen. Amen. So there's been a quenching of the Holy Spirit um, everywhere. And whether you're having church service in church and um, in ministry, um, the Holy Spirit is being quenched and tamed. And people are not allowing a free, full control of the flow of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to flow and have his way in our services, in our church services, in our Bibles, in our, in our prayer meetings, in our evangelism, everywhere we go. The Holy Spirit wants to have his way, but people are so caught up with being so controlling. Controlling Amen. is the Craft, okay people are so caught up with being in control being in charge now you try to control the holy spirit and now he ain't there amen now he ain't there it's just charisma and emotions being used it ain't mm. the holy spirit and now we have to do all this extra stuff to get people hyped right let the holy spirit have now it becomes performance oh right girl mm. Girl, that was tough right there. <laughs> wow. Wow. Amen. That's so true. And it becomes performance because we're caught up in the programs. We're caught up in the lights. Mm -hmm. We're caught up in the order of things. We're caught up in the timing. Right. But hurry up at this time. Right. I grew up in a church that, man, the pastor, Pastor Freddie, God bless you. If you've seen this, we love you. He, that man could preach for hours. And I grew up in that. And you know mm -hmm. what? I'm glad I did because it developed discipline. Right. Mm -hmm. It developed for me to be able to sit down and really um, hear the word, even though I wasn't a child. And now right. everything in this time is so fast and, and quick pace and all this, you know, now nobody, everybody wants to hurry up and go home. So now the Holy Spirit's not there and we're distracted with everything. There's a whole bunch of distractions um everyone's talking to each other and was he he ha ha laughing making jokes and um yes we could have fun with the holy spirit but how how are we having fun if you if you don't even let him be there talk about it okay right and so we're we're caught up in gossiping oh girl you saw what she wore today i don't know why she wearing those shoes oh my god girl why she stank you, you smell that <laughs> Oh my God, I can't believe she came in high. Who it's she think true. she is? It's true. 
in all seriousness, it, it's very true that the same things that take place outside of the church are happening inside. So what makes somebody wants to come to church? Why would they come? My God. So, so, and then we're putting on the, we're putting a demand on our children and on our youth. Why don't you want to worship? Why do you want to do this? Why don't you pray? Why don't you want to worship? Why do you want to be on your TikTok all day or your YouTube all day, right? You want to be mm -hmm. on your Fortnite all day, right? Mm -hmm. Once the adults respect and honor the Holy Spirit, then the youth and children will do it too. Yes, yes, I agree. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Right? If from the head down. My God. So what is the Lord doing? He's tearing down the spirit of religion. 2020, we tearing down that spirit of religion. I'm going to put a quote, spirit of religion. What is this spirit of religion? This spirit of religion is putting not just what we're talking about, but there's been so much strict rules and regulation on the people and it makes them and it's, it's putting them back in that place. You have to work for it. It's all about works now. So the spirit of religion is putting this false idea, ideology upon congregations, upon churches that is about works. Do not put your earrings. Do not put makeup on. You can't wear pants. That's not holy. You got to put a head covering. You're not holy enough. It's, you can't eat this because of this. Listen, sometimes the Lord will direct people on certain diets that they have to have because that's between them and the Lord. It's not that we go and pose that on everybody else. It's not what you eat that defiles you. It's what comes out of you. It's what's in the heart. Say that one more time. That's so good. It's not what you eat that defiles you, is what you say, is what comes out of you. It's in the heart. Mm -hmm. Starting from here, your heart posture. That's what's in here. It's not about how well you can dress or how who is no competition, who's more modest than the other, and should we wear stockings, right? Um, it's not about um, should we cut our hair? Should we not dye our hair? Right? right. And um, and, and I, I'm being real. I, I'm going in and, and it's not just that. It's not just that you can't dance. Oh, we can't dance, but we can dance before the Lord. David danced. Mm -hmm. Amen. David danced. We, we can dance before the Lord. Right. There's been so much restrictions and and, and, and this 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 feeling of this works. And now we're forgetting about grace and mercy and love and now it's yeah. really hard to love god and love people because that spirit of religion has a, is a stronghold on the minds of the people so now um they're thinking i gotta do all this work i gotta do all this work I, that's every other religion you have to do works to get into quote unquote heaven and there's other religions that they don't even like offer the same redemption that Christianity offers. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't. Amen. They make it hard. So this spirit of religion is coming into the body of Christ, right? So much control, witchcraft. Okay. We're going back into that word because I just need, we, I just want everyone to understand how critical this is, right? And the reminder it is by grace we were saved. It was by God's grace that he sent his only son to be the appropriation of our sins. Not that we loved him, but he loved us first. It was his grace that came to save us. And we believe by faith that he is the Lord and savior, right? It was our faith. So now what we, now we put our faith into action. Amen. We put our faith into action, but it shouldn't feel, it shouldn't tire you out. Um, it, it shouldn't feel tiring. It, 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 it shouldn't be boring. It, it shouldn't make you frustrated. It should fulfill you. It should empower you when you do the work of the Lord. 
Right. It should feel it. There should be a level of empowerment and freedom as you're doing it. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about the Pharisees, remember? Right. And when Jesus was doing his miracles and he did his miracles on the Sabbath, they wasn't so mad. They were such <laughs> haters. And so they were like, why would you do this on the Sabbath? Why would you work on the Sabbath? And mm -hmm. he's like, well, if a sheep was to go and fall into a crack or somewhere, mm -hmm. wouldn't you go pull it out? And they're, you know, they're probably like, oh man, he about to, he about to get at us again. Right. And, mm -hmm. and he, he, he was, he was like, it's, it's, it's not against the law to do good on the Sabbath. Right. Right. That's it's not, it's, it, it's not supposed to be works. It's supposed to be good. Healing, taking the time out to minister to the people. Mm -hmm. is a good work. Taking the time out to pray for healing is a good work it's and, and it's, it's not supposed to be like this hard work it's supposed to be doing excuse me the goodness of the father right is we're supposed to do good amen yeah, so sharing the gospel amen mm -hmm. amen and this is why people are so resentful towards the church and people begin to put up because all these restrictions and now people are resentful. And then some people are in shame yeah. and guilt because they feel like everything is wrong all the time because of this nasty stronghold. Mm -hmm. Would you like to chime in, Sister Joy? Lord help. <laughs> Lord help. <laughs> That's what I have to chime in. Lord help. <laughs> So well, now that we went and opened everybody up, amen, we're going to, um, we're going to sew you back up. We're going to encourage you, make you feel real good. Amen. <laughs> we can step into this new year, like free, hallelujah, right? <laughs> right? Glory to God. It's so much fun. Amen. I promise we won't leave you like that. Go ahead. Elder I would, I would think that, you know, you were saying something earlier that like the programming in church, right? Like having to stick to your formula, whatever your worship service looks like, right? Um, needing to stick to that outline and not giving room for the Holy Spirit to move. And I think a lot of people being at home, there are two challenges. One, how do I still minister and minister effectively while being at home and can I do it virtually, mm -hmm. right? Can I still do deliverance virtually? Can I still pray for healing for someone virtually? And will it still be effective? But if you weren't giving room for the Holy Spirit to move before Ooh. the pandemic, what makes you think that you'd be able to operate in that same manner at home, right? And I think it's so fascinating that everyone has their programs, but no one is willing to like go off course. No one's willing to just take a moment and like just check in with the Holy Spirit and be like, you want us to go to the next, you know, the next piece or do you want prayer to happen or what? And I think that's why revival needs to hit the land the way that it's, it's, it's going to come because it, it's going to come like... What's, the, what's that cartoon? Dragon Ball Z or no, Street Fighter. People know Street Fighter where the fire comes out of their hand. It's going to hit like, like that, like a fireball is just going to roll out across the land of revival because people need to be saved. People need to know Jesus for the true person that he is, like not this person that we've created, not this person that we've traditionalized or legalized. In, and, and used it to control people like there needs to be a change and 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 you're so on point with the the father needing to shake up the world like and i'm excited to see what happens in 2022 with religion totally excited to see what happens with the church and the body of christ yeah it's listen listen elder joy that thing is going to just it's going to break down the stronghold of that spirit of quote-unquote religion mm -hmm. right 
um, it's going to break down the strongholds of the minds of the people. Um, it's going to come and tear down theology and doctrines and everything. And he's coming like an axe with his sword and he's coming pop on the earth. And it has, it's going to be teared down for his kingdom to be built up. Yeah. It's almost like it's so much head knowledge and mm-hmm. there's not enough room for the Holy Spirit to, oh, to flow. Exactly. 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 So true. And oh. it's time to let him flow. Mm-hmm. It's time to take a stand and make a change. Yes. It, it is time. I agree. This, this year... It ain't no joke. Mm-hmm. It's our time is now. We we oh, but yes, we, last year was my time. Last year was my time. It was my season. It was my time. This time, at that time. But I thought it was my time. I thought it was in my season. When God says, "I'm shaking the church. I'm shaking the core of religion." Yes. He's come down and break down barriers. That's He's coming it. down and tearing down old kingdoms yes. that people have built that was not in the name of Jesus. So that it was in vain. Tearing it down. Old mindset. We're entering a time. It's going to be even more dark. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, why are you scaring us? It's going to be more dark. So we need a we need to be a church that is unshakable and that is unmovable. All right. We're going to be a church that we're not going to give in to the devil. We're not going to give in to the things of the world. We're not going to go and hide in our and hide in, in, in our home and say, oh, I guess uh, we're never going to come out of this. We're going to just this. This is our fate. No, we're going to rise up and the a spirit of evangelism has to rise, has to be swept across the nation, whether mm-hmm. you're in the office of evangelist or not you could be a prophet you could be a pastor but that needs to rise up because it's time to go to the highways and byways Mm -hmm. make disciples out of all nations baptizing people in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost amen Mm. it's time to bring to to restructure the four rabbi it's time to restructure Mm. the walls of the church there's a restructuring happening there is a reset but now if god is doing a restructure he is doing a new thing he says forget the old thing for it has passed for now i do a new thing could you not perceive it amen and get me let me tell you something y'all gonna start perceiving it because we've been moving those blinders today in jesus yes. name amen hallelujah hallelujah man hot, holy ghost amen amen jesus come and have your way have your way hallelujah hallelujah so i wrote some decorations here of joy this is joy <laughs> Let's see, y'all gotta have fun with it. Listen, I know it was tough, but we're gonna we're gonna get come on, we're gonna push right. through. Let's do this, guys. We got right. this. Mm-hmm. Amen. We're gonna do some declarations here and then prayer. Amen. And the Holy Spirit's just gonna, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna let the Holy Spirit come on in. Yes. Yeah. Come on yeah. in and he'll do what he wanna do because this is his. Yes, it is. So Jesus, come on in. Hallelujah. Come on in, Jesus. Coming into our homes. Come on in. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to start some declarations and we're going to just jump on in and just let the fire go. (laughs) (laughs) Everything there was like a, you know, you take the, um, the stick and you're trying to fire. That's what was happening. It was like, yes. (laughs) It was like, poke, poke, poke. Amen. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm glad this is blessing everyone. If this is blessing you, just let us know in the comments. Hey, this is blessing me. Right. Okay. Let us know it's blessing. Just say hallelujah. Put some fire. You know, who's ready for revival? Fire! Yes! <laughs> Woo. Who's ready for the fire? <laughs> Ooh, I know I am. I feel fired up right now. Glory to God. Amen. So, <laughs> amen for real. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's do this. Everybody's like, come on. Yeah, let's do this. All right. Do some declarations. All right. Mm-hmm. So let's begin. Hallelujah. I decree and declare the gates of the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Christ. Yes, according yes. to Matthew 16, 18. Hallelujah. I decree and declare the body of Christ will unite according to Mark 3, 25. I decree and declare it, the church will have discipline to tame the tongue, according to James 3, 6, 9. 
I decree and declare inner healing will begin to take place in leaders and in members. According to James 5, 16, I decree and declare deliverance from bondage, deliverance from bondage, from deliverance from setback, deliverance from the spirit of religion, deliverance from the old mind will take place in the church. According to Galatians 5, 1, I decree and declare witchcraft, hate, envy, selfish ambition, discord, impurity, sexual immorality, fits of rage and every evil work of the like is broken off the church in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that our soul will prosper according to 3 John 1, 2. I decree and I declare that the works of our hands will prosper according to Deuteronomy 39. And I decree and I declare that we are cheerful givers. Yes. We give our times, our talents, and our offerings Offerings. We cheerfully give because God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this new year, God. I, 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 I thank you for the freedom that is taking place, God. I thank you that strongholds are being broken off the people, it's being broken off the church in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for the reconstruction for what you are doing in the church, oh God. I thank you that everyone will surrender and be obedient and giving their yes to God and giving their yes to you to do exactly what you have called us to do for such a time as this oh god god we will not be afraid by the hour by by the hour by day or the hour by night god we will not be afraid by the enemy of heavenly father but god we will rise up and we will stand in the name of jesus christ taking territory taking back our nations taking yes. back our cities taking yes. back our families yes. taking back our children taking it all back yeah. the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the right God, we are here to take it all back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We will not be a church who runs and hides in a cave, oh God, but we will be a people who will go out into the world, who will go to the highways and byways, and yeah. we will go lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover in the name of Jesus. We will go evangelize, and so shall be saved in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We will do exactly what you have called us to do in the Great Commission. We will go take care of the world. We will go feed the orphans. Hallelujah. We will go make sure that our brother and sister is okay. We will do what we need to do. Hallelujah. No more setback. No more hindrance. No yes. more stay. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I thank you for the great awakening that is yes, happening around God. the globe, oh God. I thank you that you arise and awake every intercessor, every slumbering spirit. I say arise and awake and take yes, your God. place. For now is your time to rise up and, and shine. Now is your time to rise up and pray and to declare a thing and it shall That's be established. Right. God, I thank you the prophets are rising up. I thank you prophets are coming out of their cave this year. I thank you they're coming out. They're coming out to really, really say what the Lord really has to say. They're coming out to really say what the Lord has to say. No more lies, no more manipulations, but straight truth. Hallelujah. To bring salvation, to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to bring yes. breakthrough, God. God, I thank you the apostles are rising up, oh God, that they will have the strength and they will have the ability, they will have the capability, they will have the knowledge to take territory and to build what you have called them to do, to build the pioneering spirit that is upon them, Heavenly Father, to be pioneers in this kingdom for such a time as this, God. I thank you for the boldness yeah. that is filling up our evangelist, God, as Hallelujah. they go out into the street and as they boldly and as they yell out, preparing the way for the return of Jesus Christ, just like John the Baptist was in the wilderness, yes. just as John the Baptist was rising out, I decree and declare 2022, hallelujah, that John the Baptist, all of them are rising up to boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the name of Jesus. They're rising up to operate in great signs, miracles, and wonders. They're rising up to go and to get the lost soul 
soul saved. They're rising up to do exactly what God has called them to do for such a time as this, yes. God. And I thank you for the pastors that are rising up, God. I thank you, Lord, our pastors are not people of compromise, God. I thank you for the heart of the pastor. I thank you the heart that you have given yes. pastors to really love on people and to take care of people. Hallelujah, God. I pray for uh, strengthen our pastors, God. Give them more grace, oh God. Every backstabbing that pastors have endured these past years, oh God, from their own sheep that they're just trying to take care of their getting their hands are getting bitten, they're getting attacked, God. I remove those yes. swords. I remove those swords out of their backs now yes. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I decree and declare that every uh, 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 the blockage of the from the finances that the pastors are receiving is broken in the in name the of Jesus. Jesus. Open heavens over your house. Open heavens over your congregation. Open heavens to receive the blessings and the finances and the wealth and the riches of God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the pastors that really care. The pastors that really love God and love people. The pastors that get in there with the sheep and they get in dirty with them and they get in all stank with them because they love them, God. God bless our pastors exceedingly and abundantly more than they can ask for oh god our pastors do such a mighty work father god pastors do great things for the people god they do great things for your kingdom and they often get put to the side but god i thank you for the grace that's upon our pastors i thank you for the fresh fire that's upon our pastors yes. i thank you that pastors are going to operate in signs miracles and wonders inner healing and deliverance for the people for the congregation in the name of jesus hallelujah i thank you for the for for the war that are rising up in each and every pastor in this time for such a time as this god and we pray for teachers god the real teachers the true yes. teachers of the word those who preach the true gospel those who teach the true gospel the living gospel of jesus christ hallelujah god i thank you teachers are rising up with such a boldness to have authority when they teach i thank you for the sword that comes out of their mouth that will pierce the hearts and the joints of the people oh god I thank you for the swords that come out of the teachers that will tear down every false teaching, every false doctrine, every false thing. They're coming to cut it down and tear it down. And the authority that they walk in, the authority to bring a, a, a true freedom, authority to bring deliverance, authority to bring freedom, authority to bring salvation, God. I thank you, Lord, that the teachers have discipline and consistency and diligence in this hour. Discipline, consistency, and diligent and studying and reading the word oh god take them to a new level father god as they begin to go into the word god unlock the the, the mysteries of god as they begin to as they begin to teach oh god as our as bishops begin to uh, um just teach on the people and pour out hallelujah everything that they're pouring out god a pure a doctrine a pure doctrine a pure teaching a pure teaching god i thank you for purity with them are fivefold. I thank you for purity within the intercessors, God. I thank you for purity within the intercessors. I break witchcraft off intercessors now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I break witchcraft. I be broken in the name of Jesus. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Every ungodly prayer prayed from bitterness against the leadership, against the people of God, against the body of Christ. We nullify its effect now with the blood of Jesus. We reverse the curse and we decree and declare it is a blessing. For God could take anything that the devil meant for harm and turn it around for our good. And we will see the goodness of the Lord because we have tasted the goodness of the Lord. We have seen the goodness of the Lord. We have witnessed miracles here and there. We have seen God move. But I decree and declare that it will be so much more evident in the presence and the power of God will be so much more tangible to the people of God. Hallelujah. I break every mindset. I break every false teaching. I break fear for God has not given the people a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Fear to go deeper into the things of the Lord. Fear to go higher into the realms of the spirit to see what it is, the mysteries that the Lord wants to do, God. I thank you for the new thing, God. I thank you. We're entering in. We're ushering in. And no matter what happens, 
We will always eat the goodness of from the land, God. Yes, Never have you seen your righteous people forsaken or begging for bread, God. I thank you for the wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom. Hallelujah. We are a people who will walk in wisdom, God. We will walk in wisdom, God. And God, we give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit showed up. Mm-hmm. Came right on in and kicked down the front door to the church. My God. My God. Woo. Mm. Wow. Woo. What a word. What a word. What a prayer. What a move of the Holy Spirit. Just, woo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you for your glory, God. Oh, hallelujah. Just to sit a minute and just to bask in his glory, just be in his presence. <sighs> wow. Jesus. I saw, I literally saw the globe and I saw like a church on a globe. Mm -hmm. And I saw chains just breaking and breaking mm -hmm. violently That's the kingdom it. of god suffered by violence but the violence take, take it, it by, by force. force my god it's time it's time for us the bible talks about being a city on a hill it's time for us to be the city on the hill no yeah. longer should we be in darkness no longer should we be kept out of arenas and areas that we should have influence in and power and impact but this is the time for the church to arise and it's no longer time for us to sleep and to slumber but it's time yeah. for us to arise and that is the problem we need to stop wanting to be fed and stay on on on, on baby milk we need to mature to food. We need to eat what it is that the Lord is giving us to eat. We need to read the word for ourselves. We need to pray for ourselves. We need to press into his presence in order for the church to go anywhere. We got to be it together in prayer. Oof. We got to get it together. Okay. And this is no longer time for us to fool around, to waste time, to be on our backs, to just Oh, yeah, 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 I'll pray another day. Oh, yeah, 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 I'll read another day. No, we need to be serious about the word of God, just like we're serious about watching our TV shows, watching reality TV, you know, going out and hanging out, going to lounges and going out to eat and doing whatever we do. We need to become serious about what it is that God has given us. There's too much gifts in the body of Christ for us to be failing. Oh, my God, come on. My God. If we are called the body, we are the sword. That same sword they talk about bone and marrow that separates bone and marrow. If you understand what, how, how they get bone marrow out of an individual to transplant it, they use this, this long needle to go into the bone and pull it up and pull it out. It's hard to get to the marrow. So if the word of God separates bone from marrow, we should be the weapons. Woo, come on. We should be the weapons. We need to sharpen ourselves to be used by God. All those, de there's like demons possessing people walking on the street. And like, you can see it with your bare eyes, but if you're not in tune with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to see it. And this is the time we have to take back what is rightfully ours. That whole, that, that scripture that you prayed, the violent take it by force. Like we have to go back for what is ours. We have to take back what is ours. And that is what this whole uh, decree, the declare it in the new year is about. 
taking the seven mountains of influence, taking the mountains that, pe- that, that the world and the enemy has used and manipulated for his building up of his kingdom, this is time for us to take it back. Amen. Amen. You got me all fired up. <laughs> Look at you. I was like, oh, woo, fire. All fired up. I just, Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Glory God. to God. I am just grateful to you for being obedient to the assignment. And what, what's that? What's that real? The TikTok, whatever. I understood the assignment. Like <laughs> you understood the assignment. Praise God. We give God glory, man. <laughs> you surely did. And I'm so grateful for what it is that he gave you, what he downloaded in you. I just want to take a moment and pray for you and pray a covering. Yeah. So Father, we pray and we thank you for your daughter, Jasmine, for how you used her this morning, for how you gave her the word, you gave her the declarations and you ignited her in prayer, Father, to seal the things for this year of 2022 with regards to religion. So Father, we pray against backlash, oh God, and side lash in the name of Jesus that she Lord God would be hidden. Oh, Heavenly Father, hidden under the wings of the shadow of the Almighty. Father, we know, oh God, that you said in your word that the weapon may form, but it's about it not prospering. So we pray that no weapon formed against her shall prosper. We pray, Lord God, that your daughter would be bold and courageous to continue to do the works of the Lord, that she would go forth and build for your kingdom. Father, we thank you for the fire that you placed deep down on the inside of her. Surround her with people that would continue to fan the flame, people that would continue to encourage her, continue to support her in everything that she does, people that she can be accountable to, people, Lord God, that will continue to show her the way that would fill in the gaps that she's missing, Father. So today we thank you for her labor of love. We thank you for her servant's heart and for what she poured out and left here today. Fill her up, oh God, so that she may operate from the overflow. Lord, we thank you that you rest on our home tonight. Give her peace in her mind, in our home, and in her space, Father. In Jesus' name, we cover her with the blood. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. 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 Ooh. I'm trying to recover. So <laughs> thank you all for joining us for this moment of declared in the new year where we spoke to the mountain of religion. I pray that we would continue to pray for the things that Minister Jasmine mentioned, that we would continue to attack them in prayer, and that um this year would be the year that the church rises to its rightful place. So if you are excited, if this got you amped and ramped up, wait until next week to see what we have in store for the next mountain. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Every Saturday, it's the Lord's Prayer, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tell somebody.